everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode I'd like to do some more drone programming, in this case I'd like to do some advanced variables. So let's start and show you a demonstration and then we'll look at building that program. So in my hand here I've got a drone, so I'm going to put the drone down, doesn't matter where I put it, and we're going to watch what the drone's going to do. So first of all, let's put it down like that. It's going to sit here for a few seconds. And it's got a position that's renamed itself, and it's actually the position where I put it down, like this. And then it goes to this location and sits down and does nothing. In fact, it simply waits. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the remote, which I've been playing with a little bit more, and I'm going to tick channel 1 on, like this. And you'll notice this sign here. Watch the sign, it'll change. So signal 1 is now highlighted as the top row, and the drone is going to wait, and then it's going to move. It's going to reset signal 1 at the top and then move back again. See, it's going to, it takes 5 seconds because I've got some weights in there. So we'll have a look at building this program. Like that. And that's it. Very, <laughs> it doesn't look that very much, does it? But we'll have a look at the program now and see what it's doing. And we'll, then we'll build up the program. Now we'll build up the program first. Oops, let's get it back again because it's gone into this chest, of course. Like that. So let's, let's build up this program. I've got a, you can see all the components it needs, there's quite a few. So let's take the one out of here and start with a new drone. Let's put this new drone into here. And then we start programming it. So the first thing we need, of, as always, is a start piece like this. And then we're going to do, I'm going to then put down a, a new piece which we've not used before which is the renamed drone piece here, like this. And I'm going to put this one down here like that, beside it. And then I'm going to give it a text label, like this. Now let's have a look at this first of all. I'll get the book out, because we're probably going to have a look at this, because it's fairly complicated. Well, it's not complicated. It's very easy, actually. But it takes a bit of figuring out if you haven't done it before. So what I would like to do is to go to the GUI, to the section that talks about coordinates, which should be condition basic block, the coordinate operator widget. I think it's this one. So we look at this. Oops, missed. I right clicked. I shouldn't have done that, should I? Try that again. This one. Is it conditions? No, I don't want conditions. I want uh, coordinate operator, operator widget. This one here. And it, it tells you a little bit about variables in this one. You can, so one thing you can do is stored variables. Let's have a look. Variables persist, persist across world reloads. Um, and then you can basically, you can debug variables by using a rename widget, which we've done, and an edit sign, or by using a label in the remote. So apart from that, you've got special variables. And one of these special variables is dollar drone. Other variables are global variables and the local variables. Let's have a look at those first of all. Let's actually do that with, with the programmer, I think it's probably the easiest way. So here I would like to put down the value of the drone in here, see what the, where the drone is. So we're going to change this. And the so dollar drone would be the variable we would use, but in order to display that, we have to then put a dollar braces around it like this. And that's it. So then this becomes the position of the drone. We can test that. Let's program this into this uh, drone here like that. Let's put it down somewhere. I'm going to move this one out. Oh, the program one I'm going to move out and put it into here because we don't need that for the sake of argument. Like this. Let's just put it down anywhere we like. At the moment it's called, if we look at it, it's called drone. Okay. So now if I put it down here and then we look at it, it's now got a position. So it's 299.67.326. So let's just move to that position if I can. And on the map, it, yes, you can see it's 325 on there. 67 is the position because my feet are actually on 61, uh, 66, sorry. Um, but the drone's one block higher than that. So let's get it back again and carry on with the program. So the next thing I would, do, I would like to do is to sleep for five seconds. So let's put in the sleep field in here. So that's the sleep, the wait. And I want to just sleep for five seconds like this. Um, I think we'll do it this way around, yeah. And we'll come in the widget here. We'll just 
set, select this to five seconds like this. And that's the, that's the weights we're going to put in between things that actually happen. So the next thing I'd like to do is to edit the sign. So here's a sign, for instance, and it's got one over here like this. Now we have to get the position of the sign first of all. So let's take the GPS tool here. And what I have to do is actually put it one block above this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a block of something behind that. Let's go and get some blocks because I haven't got any with me. What can we use? Let's use this wood, pine wood, okay. So I'm going to put the pine wood down here like this. And the sign is actually one block above it here. So that's actually the position of the sign. It's not one block high, it's higher than one block high. And so in order to edit it, you've got to select that point. So let's do that. So I want to right shift right click that and then left click it and it's then that is that position. So we then break these blocks away. We can break all of them actually. Now we'll just break the blocks away because we've got the sign here already. Like that. So now we've got this, the position of the sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it the value of the widget. So there is, so we need to edit sign. So there's an edit sign component, which is, I have to find it. It's not always that straightforward <laughs> to find. There we go, this purple piece here. It's actually too high. We'll have to move these two down like that and put it in here. So we have to specify an area. So we have to specify the position of the sign like this. So we'll simply do that with this. Let's slip, plug it onto here like that. Then you have to specify a text widget here. So we have to put in a text widget. So we can actually have multiple text widgets. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to use the global variable. Now in the remote here, let's have a look at this remote. I've got this channel one here. So if I shift right click this, we should be able to edit that. So if we have a look at this, um, right click this one here, you'll see it's got a hash in front of it, which means it's a global variable and it's the signal one. It's the name of the variable that we can do. We could actually put tooltip in here. So we could say um, something like move drone a little bit. Or we'll start cycle if you like, whatever it is. It doesn't matter much, that's the tooltip. So then when we come out of here now and right click this, we'll see here we've got move drone as a on this on this channel. On this one here we've got nothing at all because I didn't specify any of those. So now we've called it signal one. So let's come along here and then program this. So with the hash with the signal one, you put hash signal one, of course. If I can spell it, which I seem to have difficulty with. And then we put it around at some braces, like the, the same time as we did before, with a dollar sign in front of it. And then that becomes this, I'd missed out the one, didn't I? One. Okay, so that's got signal one. I can duplicate that, move it over here, for example, and then put in signal two. So we can edit that, we just come along here. We just change that to signal two. So it'll display those two signals. And those two signals you can see on the remote here, like this, uh, that's the value of them here, as you can see. So that shows signal two, and this is actually showing signal one. So let's go and edit this text again, and actually put that in correctly. So if I just right after command shift, right click it, and then right click this one, and then we can say shows signal one. Um, but we'll put a hash on it, so we know it's a global variable. like that and this one I changed as well I've got show signal too but we can also put a hash in front of that like that and then when we actually look at the remote again we'll see that this one shows value of signal one this just shows sorry wrong way around signal one and signal two so now we can right click the tr this thing here and then we can click this button and it tells you what it's showing so we click that like that and it will show this this is the x coordinate and it only affect the uh, Checkbox widgets only affect the X coordinate. Button widgets, on the other hand, will affect any any of those ones you want. And these are drop downs. And drop downs, you can specify ranges of characters or whatever. There's actually fairly limited space, so you have to keep this text short. Zombie is targeting me. Okay, that's fine. This robot will hold. This one drone will go over here and zap that 
zombie. So the zombies have quite a large range. Anyway, let's go back to the program here. So at the moment, that design doesn't get updated, of course, because we haven't told it to do this yet. So let's put this drone in here. There is one other thing I haven't showed you here. So at the moment, this is set to R. So I have to press R to actually... No, I have to put the thing in that says pressing the button, program and pressing the button. But when you're developing programs, it's actually more useful to do item inserted like that. So we can then come along here and put this in and as soon as we put this in it gets programmed like that it's programmed now so let's have the new program in it so let's just test it so it's going to come along here and it's going to rename this to the value of those signals well, that's what I'm hoping it'll do anyway so let's look at the remote yep they've oh, hit the sign signal one signal two it should have done that. And what have I done wrong? Let's have a look. So we can move this around so you can actually see it a bit better. So it's actually editing these, but maybe I've got this area is wrong. So let's right click it and then you can see which. Oh, yes, it's one block above, isn't it? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit this program. Uh, the easiest way to edit this program is come along here, take the remote here, and then right click the. I'm sorry, not the remote, the GPS tool, and right click it. So we can just add it down here 66, and that's it. So that's now got two positions, as you can see. So I'm a bit confused about this. It's, last time I did it, it didn't work that way, but never mind. Let's just put this into here. It doesn't matter that it's slightly bigger than the sign. Okay, so now we go and get the robot. Let's shift right click it, and then come along here, and then we'll have a look at that. Shift program, it's already programmed because it's got that mode. So we should now put it down and it should work. So we're expecting to see, yes, there you go. As you can see, it's got one and zero, one, one. But actually, probably what I should do is to also do what I did last time, and that's to put in the text as well. So let's do that as well. So this is the text. So we can simply change this to, for example, signal one. signal hash one I shall call it signal one yes that's right like this and put curl on it and then we'll do the same for the second one here and I just pressed escape to close the window I really do have trouble put spelling that don't I so there we are so this time we'll pick up the drone and put it in again so that's well that we'll leave that for next time because we'll carry on with this program the next part of this program is to use these global variables to trigger the drone to do some movement. So what we'd like to do next is we need we need a condition. So let's put a position condition down here. Now this is actually too big at the moment, so I'll just scroll it down a bit because the position piece is actually bigger. So I'll bring it up here like that. I hope you can read that still. It's probably better there. Okay, so now we need to take the position piece here and it's position coordinate this one the coordinate condition and i'm going to put that here so there are two things we'd like to check so the first one we're going to do is i need a, a coordinate piece in fact i need two of these things so let's get them out of here and that's the coordinates so we need one of those like that and we're going to put this one on here like that and that's going to be the value of signal one so we right click this and we're going to select a variable of hash signal one. I haven't written it down yet, so I've put it in like that. And you can compare it to a constant, we'll do that next. So that's now got the value of signal one in here. Then we'll, we'll create a new one of these, actually, it'll probably easiest to put, create a new one. Put it down like, oops, wrong one, check it away, try again. Put this one here like that. And then we'll right click this and this time we're going to just set the value of x to being one like that so what this is saying is that you can actually see it here so it's got some errors in here and it's got a condition so let's select the condition so we're really only interested in being x1 is equal to x2 so that's x1 and that's x2 now it should tell you here that the condition is equal to x1 
actually wrong. Let's fix that to equals. We want it equals. Well, that's new. So that's uh, x1 equals x2, rather than being greater than here. So what we then do is it then has got it needs to go somewhere after that. And there's two places you've got on the left hand side is the true is the false condition, that's this side. On the right hand side you've got the true condition. So we need some jumps. So let's create some jumps in here. Uh, we need a label for it to go to, and then we also need a jump. Like this. No, wrong, I've got that wrong. Actually, I don't need this at all for this at the moment. But I do need is a text label here. So we're going to create a text label. So well, the first one we'll do is true. So we'll actually then have to duplicate this one over here. It's going to it's complaining because it's got no two errors. It's got no text piece. We want to leave this one as true. So what we're going to say is signal set. Like that. You can put spaces in it. It doesn't make any difference. And then we can middle click this one and drag it over here. Like that. It should still have an error because it's got nothing to do. So what we're going to do is something very simple. We're just going to put down a piece to actually stand by. Go to stand by here like this. So when the signal is set, it's going to go to standby. And then when it's not set, it just carries on down here for the time being. Let's just get rid of that one. And let's see if this works as we expected to do. Let's click the drone in. It's now programmed. As you can see, it's got more pieces than the thing. So we're now we're going to put it down here like that. We're going to debug it. And we're going to watch the program. Like this, we move this up here. So it's at the moment it's in the wait bit. And that's going to wait for five seconds, then it's going to come down here. So it has done this condition, so it is not set at the moment. As you can see, it's signal one is must be must have set it huh oh yeah signal one is set so it should have basically gone to sleep which it has done let's do this again and then turn off signal one like that let's put the drone down again and this time it shouldn't sit down let's do the control d and then have a look at the program again you see it's now waiting here it's actually too fast to actually see in here so what i tend to do with this is to put a delay in so you can see it going somewhere so this time it should still be hovering as you can see it's still stuffing floating around stuff let's pick it up again and this time we're going to put some more weights into the program so we can see what's happening more easily because these are very fast it'll have gone to there before you even realize it's gone to there and settle, settle down again so what I like to do is this. Take these bits off here like this. Take this off here like this. And then just duplicate this piece. I probably could have done it easier that way, couldn't I? I want to duplicate that one. And I'll duplicate this one. So I'm going to wait as soon as it's reached this condition before it goes to sleep. Like that. And got it into place. Good. Put those back again. And then I'm going to do the same on the false side this time as well. So we're going to put the false condition on. So here you could have a jump or a false. So let's do both. So we've got a jump here. So we're going to put a jump in here. So if it's false, it's going to go somewhere else. So this time we're going to say not set. So let's have a look. Uh, create a new text label. And we're going to jump to signal one's not set. Like that. I'm just going to call it not set straightforward doesn't make much difference and then I want to basically copy this over here like that and then we're going to go and copy this text over here like that and it should go indicate here so at the bottom of this when it's not done anything else it'll go there we could do the same thing I don't have to use this jump label I can simply take a, get rid of the jump label and put in a false condition on this side I don't think it makes any difference it's a little different but not very much so let's put a sleep in here again like this uh, and we'll do it for five seconds again do it from here of course and put a sleep in here like that so we, we've got enough time to actually watch the program flow as it happens let's put the drone back in 
it's now been programmed as you see it's got more pieces in it and then put the drone down put the drone down get debugging on it and let's have a look so we go down here like this press ctrl t and then press u and then we can actually move it up here and we should be in this weight now you see it's false because x1 x1 is not equal to x2 because it's turned off so it's carrying on here it's still waiting as you can see and then it's going to carry on here and it's going to go to this side so now we're going to set the turn the drone on with the remote so we just simply set that one to one here and it's going to take let's press u again and we'll see this time it should go to the other side over here so it's actually done that and it's still set so it's carrying on so all i'm going to do now is basically it's a lot isn't it but it's actually fairly straightforward it's just sitting down there let's just pick it up again and come along here and then finish off this program because what i would like it to do is not very much to be honest with you I've got it to stand by here, and then what I'd like to do is to move to a position. So let's do that next. So we're going to move it from one position to another position. So I just need a dirt block down, oh, some block down here. I'm going to move it from here. Let's move it from here, for example, to here. It can be anything, of course. So let's get our GPS tool out again, area tool out, and just set this one here. To being that block break the block we should see it set good so I highlight this now it's there so what we're going to do is move to that position you can obviously see it's fairly straightforward from this point I wanted to move before I do the standby so the first position is the one on the left hand side to so when it's false so what I'm going to do is do move to position let's get that one out which is this one go to location Let's set the location here. I can actually do that, can I tell you? Like that. Put the standby back again. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side over here. Let's move that down. Let's grab this one over here. And then we have to give it a new position, obviously. Like that. And then we're going to give it a new position. And the position we're going to give it this time is this one. So we'll, we'll right click this block and then left click it and it'll be this block, this position. So let's break that block. And we should see it then highlighted there. Good. So we can come along here and then program this again. And this time we're going to use this position here. Like that. So in either case you're going to see it moving to one side or the other depending on the settings. Which is pretty neat so far. It's I know it's sort of, um, it's very simplistic this program. Let's put the drone down again. I didn't program it, did I? Ah, it's been picked up. It was getting picked up by the farmer drone, so I need to get it out of the box here, pick it up, and then we can put it down again. Let's get the wood out of the way. Because I think they went, they went to get charged up again, the farmer drone. So we put it down like that, press Ctrl T on it, and then let's watch the program U. So this time, it should be... Where's it gone to now? Ah, yes, it's waiting over here. So it didn't, oh, I didn't program the drone design because obviously not, otherwise it would have worked, wouldn't it? We hope. Let's put the drone into there. Ah, oh, it's got picked up. <laughs> I keep going through this loop. I will be honest with you, let's put it back in here and try it again. Um, it's not the first time I've done that, so there we are. So now it's programmed. In fact, you can see it's now got some go-to locations, I think, on it. Yep, two times go to locations on that. Uses quite a lot of materials this to do this program. It's surprising, isn't it? So there we are. So this time let's con control D on it and press U. And this time we should see it moving. So this is the one is it's waiting now because we and then it'll move to location over here, like that, and it carries on. So this is true, like that. I want to move it back again. I come along to the remote control here. I need to turn off that setting and it'll move across to this position over here. And it should tell you the height of the position. That's 296 at the moment, isn't it? It's only. It should take five seconds or so to do that. 329. Let's set that again. And it'll move back again.
it takes five seconds you see it's white now it's in the wait phase routine set signal set I hope it's working oh there we go yes it's, it's changing the Z coordinate in this like that so the next thing I was going to do in the program is is to reset the signal here so it basically then latches off oops sorry so let's do that we can get let's go and get the drone first of all Oops, I've done that again. Doesn't matter very much to be honest with you, but so what we're going to do next is, is simply reset the, the signal. Maybe I'm going to like to move these around as well a little bit. I'm going to have the move to position before it does the wait. Like that. And then I'm going to set the, the signal back here. So after the wait, we're going to set the signal back again. So what we need to do for that is to use a another component we haven't used yet, this one. The coordinate operator, like this. And this is the one that allows you to add and subtract items to values here. And it says the variable's not set. The one we're going to set, obviously, is going to be signal one like this. It does stay in this. And you've got add, subtract, and multiply, multiply divide, min, max. We're not going to use any of those, because if you don't, have anything here you'll set it back to zero again which is uh, exactly what I wanted to do I'm also going to move this to around as well because I sort of I think it's nicer to have that like that let's put those up oh, move that off a bit further so it goes to position before yes it attached to the bottom one first generally if it's in range and like that so that'll do I think let's program the drone And let's put it down again. Let's press Control D on it and then look at the program. So you see it's going over here now. Now it's waiting for five seconds. Next time it's going to set the signal and go to sleep. So it's gone to sleep and then it set the sign. So the sign just now say it's zero, zero, zero again, which it has done. And then it's moved the drone back to this position should have looked at that we'll just do that again last time right click this turn on the channel again it doesn't update the signal all the time which you'll notice so press u and you can see it's moved across here now because we've got that it doesn't hide behind these as well let's just see if i can move it so you can see all the bits so now it's waiting here so the sign's now been updated it's then going to do the comparison come over here move back again and then wait again five seconds and then shut down and it will reset the signal back to zero just to put one last time, let's turn it on. We should be able to see the signal getting changed in this process here as it moves across. Um, has it not changed the signal? Updated the sign. I'm sure it's updating the sign, so unless, of course, I've got it wrong. <laughs> oh, it doesn't seem to be updating the sign. Now, that's what a s should be. Let's just double check that position again. Right, click that one, show area. Yeah, it's got to be updating one of these two signs, hasn't it? it? Must have worked, I think it's worked. Did I, did I mess up any, any sense? I don't think so. But I didn't see it update this update the signs. Let's just do that one more time here. I probably got the wrong position on this. There is another way to use. We don't have to use signs. We can use a one of these things. Where is it gone to? An amorphic tile. I think I picked one of those up. Then let's go and get this. one of these amorphism tile now, I had a slight problem with the amorphism tile is it didn't actually go around it it tried to when I was setting it up so we can have a look at that again so if I put this tile down here and break this I'll put it on tell you put it on top of it like this if I can like this yes there you go and let's turn off the view so we can actually see it doing its stuff uh, 
this one isn't it stop showing the area okay so you do see it's actually updated both of those like that so let's turn it back on again we can turn this one off just to be sure just to be sure and see what it does I'm not seeing it updating the sign. I must have done something wrong with this program. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, now it's working. So let's put that back again. You see, it's now set to zero zero zero. Both of them set to zero zero zero. Let's turn that on. Yes, it's setting it straight away to one one one, as it should have done, and then it should set it back again as it finishes its cycle, which is when it comes out of here. Now it's done it, as you can see, and it's sleeping. So that's it for this particular episode. So I have upgraded, and there were a few changes to the mod since I've upgraded it. So let's just have a quick look at this. Um, one of the things that Danny's changed was the jet boots upgrade so now they have end rods in them so they're much more difficult to get as they were <laughs> because i wouldn't be able to get these upgrades now he's also increased the fuel usage by 10 so it's times 10 so it's now using 60 millibuckets of um compressed air compared to six uh, and there are a few other changes as well that have been affect will affect us but not too much i don't think mostly this one anyway Next time, what I'd like to do is to put all this knowledge that we've been gaining about drone programming to actually doing something different. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.